With the Z-Modeler brush selected, if you hover over a poly and press spacebar to open up the Polygon Z-Modeler menu, locate the bridge action. Underneath the bridge action, you have two targets that are associated with the bridge, connected polys and two polys, and then modifiers down below. Let's first select the two poly option. The two poly option will allow you to bridge two polygons on your actual model. So if I hover over a poly here, you'll see I get a dialog that says bridge two polys, click first poly. So I'm just going to click this one here. And then if I hover over another poly after I do that first click, you'll get the option to click the second poly. Upon clicking the second time, you will create a bridge between those two polys. If at any time you accidentally misclick the first poly and you actually wanted to start from another poly, just simply press the spacebar and that will reset the click first poly, click second poly action. Now if I go back into the actual poly menu by pressing spacebar here, I'm going to come down to the target of connected polys. Now the connected poly target has a lot more modifiers than the actual two poly option. This option will allow you to create circular elements on your model. So by default, let's come down to arcs and line on the first modifier menu there, and then we're going to leave everything below the same. Now the bridge connected polys allows you to create circular areas on your mesh between two connected polygons. So if I hover over this poly here, you'll notice you get a line corresponding to an edge in which you're closest to. So if I come across here and I have the line pointing down towards this poly here, and I click the bridge to poly option here, it is going to create a bridge from this poly here to this poly there. If I hovered over this poly and the line is going towards this poly here, it is going to create a bridge from here to there. To apply the actual bridge function, just make sure the line is pointed towards the poly you want to bridge to, and then just click and drag. While still holding the pen to the tablet or pressing your mouse button down, going left and right will determine the actual height of the bridge, and then going up and down will determine its resolution. So using these two processes here, you can generate really nice round shapes on your model. So just come across any areas of two polygons that are connected, make sure that line's pointing the direction you want to go, and then just click and drag. One other nice thing about this action is that it works really well with the Zmodeler repeat or replay function. So after I have one bridge created, I simply hover over any two connected polygons and click, and it's going to reapply that same bridge process to the other areas of my model. With this, you can just quickly come through and repeat or replay this bridge over and over again to deform different areas of your mesh. So let's undo these quick. And now let's hover back over a poly and press spacebar to bring back the Polygon Z Modeler menu. Now let's talk about some of these options or modifiers down here. This first set through here will determine how the actual curvature of your bridge will actually be determined. So you have a various settings that you can actually change and it'll update how the actual bridge is applied between those two polys. Down here you have some other modifiers. You can adjust the actual curvature of your model and actually have it specified so it's a specific curvature rather than an interactive one. You can also do the same thing with the resolution. So if you have a specific resolution you want that bridge to be applied with, just come down here and either change the slider or just type it in. And now when you go back to your model and bridge those two polys, it's going to give you the actual specific resolution along those areas. You also have the ability to align to a tangent or a normal based on how you want that bridge to be created. You can adjust the width, you can make it symmetrical or non-symmetrical, and you can also adjust the poly grouping in rows or flat. So right now, as set to rows, you're going to get an offset of poly grouping along the edges. If I come back in here and change this to flat and now bridge two polys, you're going to notice that the poly grouping is constant across the entire bridge. Other options down here will determine if you want triangles or quads to be generated through the bridge. Another neat thing about this is that the bridge will not only just generate interesting shapes like this that are round, but if you come across your mesh here and say I just queue mesh these two polygons out quick, and now I want to bridge these two polys, I'll get a different result. So coming back up to the bridge option there and bridging these two connected polys, I'm going to end up getting a more interesting bridge across that surface. So experiment with the options down here in the bridge and also the curves that are generated to determine which settings will best fit the design of your model.